Today I'm looking at the Arun indicator and I'm showing how to write the code for that. I have it here on MetaTrader 5. It shows up in a separate window. You can find a description of the indicator here on Investopedia and I'll leave the link to this Investopedia article in the description below. But basically the indicator is attempting to show strength of movement based on how far from the current candle to the previous highest high or lowest low candle. And so it plots two lines here. One is showing the strength of the downward movements based on the lowest low, and the other is showing the strength of the upward movements based on the proximity to the highest high. Uh, and there's a fairly simple formula for that, and we'll go through that as we write the code. It's not necessarily the most accurate indicator. It is potentially something, though, that you might want to include with other indicators as part of your trading strategy. And it is relatively simple. Now, because it only looks at the highest high and the lowest low, recent highest high and lowest low within a given range, this doesn't actually care what the price is. So it doesn't care how high that high is, just that it is the highest high within a range or the same for the low. So there's nothing in here that actually uses the price from the candles, any of the prices, just the distance from the current candle to the most recent high and to the most recent low. So let's switch over to the editor now and we'll write the code for this indicator. Now I have the MetaTrader 5 editor open and I've already created the outline of the code here. You could create this using the wizard if you like. I've used a template. If this looks a little different to the code that you get from the wizard, it's really just formatting. I still have the on init function and the on calculate function and there's nothing in here yet. Uh, I've also got the standard property statements. So all I've done, I just changed the way this uh, leading comment looks, but I've also included here a description of the indicator. This text all comes from the Investopedia article, and I've just included the reference to the Investopedia article there. Uh, the properties, standard copyright, link, version number, and a description which is to identify trend changes in the price of an asset and so on. Now this is an indicator. It appears in a separate window and it has two lines. So I need to add some property statements for that. So the property indicator separate window. I have two indicator buffers. Now buffers are used to store data and I have two indicator plots and the plots are used to draw the data. The plots actually relate directly to the buffers, but you may in other indicators have some buffers that are used purely for calculations and don't show anything on screen. Now, because this is going to display the two lines on screen, I'm going to add some properties of each of those lines here, and those properties show up on the input. Uh, in fact, I'll just use the magic of the editor to go to the finished product now and show how that might look. So here on the Arun indicator, this is this colors tab, and it shows the two lines that I have on screen, the color of those lines, the width, and the style. And the properties I'm about to add We'll set those up for the defaults, but you can change them in this window. So the up line, it's the first line. So this is number one here in the indicator type, color, style, width, and label. It's a line, draw a line. I'm coloring it yellow by default. It's a solid line by default. I'm making the width three. Now that's probably a little thicker than you need it, but I do this so that it shows up well on the videos and it has a label, which I'm just calling up. Now I have to do the same thing for the second plot, and I'm just going to copy what I have here. So I've copied and made some appropriate changes. This is line two, and it's the down line. I've changed this number to two because it's the second line, and I'll just note at this point, in these property statements, the lines begin with number one, or the plots begin with number one. Later in the code where you see them, they are zero based. So when I'm referring in the code to plot number zero, it is the same as referring to number one here and so on. Uh, but plot number two, it's still a line. I'm just changing the color to red and the label to down. There are also some levels on the screen. You can see those on the indicator uh, and I'm setting those at the 30, 50 and 70 level, which are the kind of default levels to add. Because this indicator ranges from zero to 100, I know that I don't need to worry about numbers way outside that range. So a little bit like the RSI where you might put the 70 and the 30 level on. So to add levels, I again have property statements and these are indicator underscore level and then levels one, two, and three, which I'm setting at 70, 50, and 30. I'm coloring them silver and I'm setting the style to a dot. 
And now I have some inputs for the indicator. There are only two inputs. The first is the number of bars that are going to be used to consider in determining the proximity to that nearest high or low. And the second is just a shift to determine whether I want to move the curve across the screen. The default period for an Arun indicator is 25, so I've set that here, and I've just set the default shift to zero, which you can change if you want. I said that there are two buffers, so I need to declare two arrays of type double. The buffer up and the buffer down will then hold the values of that line. And simply by placing values into these, once I've associated these buffers with the indicator, will set the value of the line on the chart. So now once I've done that in the onInit function, I need to associate each of these buffers with the appropriate plot. So I have buffers and plots here. So what I need to do is indicate that buffer number zero, remember they are now zero based inside the code, is associated with this buffer up array and buffer number one is associated with this buffer down array. So let's start with number zero. So there's the set index buffer statement. Number zero is associated with the buffer up array. And this is of type indicator data. There are other types. Indicator data will show the values of this array on screen. And now I also want to set some of the values of the plot. So the first is the shift if you've specified it. And I'm using plot index set integer. Again, it's plot number zero, and I'm changing the plot shift property to the value of the input shift. And the other is the plot draw begin, also with the plot index set integer for plot number zero. Because you've specified this INP period at the default of 25, it makes no sense to draw the indicator within the first 25 bars on the very far left of the chart. So I'm simply saying that the plot does not begin until INP period. Now there's one more thing I'm going to do with buffer number zero. I'm going to use array set as series for the buffer up and setting that to true. What this will do, it means that when I refer to elements of this array, then index number zero will be on the right hand side of the screen or the last bar on the screen, the one that's currently open. I do that because there are other functions such as i high and i low and so on that when they return a number that number is based on zero being on the right hand side of the screen. So I like to try to keep my array matched up with that. Uh, this is not the default, I just like to do that and it helps me to maintain consistency in my code. So now that I've done that I need to do the same thing for the buffer down which is going to be index number one. So I'll just copy this code and paste it in and make changes. So now I've made the changes, slight change to the comment there. These are all now buffer number one. I'm using the buffer down array here and here. And other than that, the shift and the draw begin are the same. And the last thing I'm going to do in the on init is set up the name that displays on the chart. Let me just go back to the chart here. You'll see there's a name here that displays the two inputs along with Arun, and then it displays the two values for the most recent bar. So first I'm setting up a variable called indicator name and I'm using the string format for that because it lets me use simple placeholders and templates. So the name is going to be Arun parenthesis and then two integer values separated by a comma and I'm substituting in the period and the shift, the two inputs for that. And then I use indicator set string, indicator short name property and that indicator name and that sets the name that appears in that top left corner of the indicator. I'm also using indicator set integer here for indicator underscore digits, setting that to zero. And that way the values for the current bar that are showing up next to the indicator name will show as a whole number. I'm setting the number of decimals to zero rather than showing a string of zeros as the decimals. And then of course return init succeeded so that this will actually continue. Now the onCalculate function, which is called every time an event happens, every time there is a tick, this will be called. When on calculate is called, the first value that's passed in here is rates total. That shows me how many 
rates I have available for calculation. And if that is less than the INP period minus one, then there's no point in going on because I don't have enough rates to perform a calculation. So if rates total is less than INP period minus one, I just return zero. And then of course this will come back in at the next tick and it may have enough rates by then. If not, it will keep cycling around until there are enough rates. The other thing that's passed in here is prev calculated and that tells me how many values I have already calculated so that I don't need to calculate every bar out of a 5,000 bar array every time this is called. I can use that to know how many I've already calculated and won't be changing. So what I want to do now is set up a simple integer value that tells me how many bars I do need to calculate. And that's going to be mostly the difference between rates total and prev calculated with some adjustments. So here in the first line, the count is equal to rates total minus prev calculated. But if prev calculated is greater than zero, it means I've been through here at least once. And I always want to recalculate the value for bar number zero. So if prev calculated just happens to be the same as rates total, it means I'm just recalling, but bar number zero can keep changing. Also, if a new bar has formed, I want to make sure I calculate bar zero and bar number one. And that's handled by this statement. If prev calculated is greater than zero, count plus plus. That just forces either bar number zero to be recalculated if there have been no new bars, or if there have been new bars, it forces me to one time recalculate the bar that has now become bar number one. Then I've got another test in here. If count is greater than rates total minus INP period plus one. So if I'm expecting to calculate more values than I reasonably can simply because I can't go within INP period of the total rates, then I reset count to rates total minus INP period plus one. So this is kind of the maximum number of bars that I can calculate. So once I have this count telling me how many bars I'm going to process, I now need a standard loop. Because I've set my indicator arrays to be as series, which means that bar number zero is to the right, that means that I'm counting down in this loop. So for int i equals count minus one. So count tells me how so count tells me how many bars I have to calculate, but because the array is zero based, I'm beginning at count minus one. While i is greater than or equal to zero, i minus minus. So I'm beginning at count minus one and stepping through all the bars down to bar number zero. This indicator is based on the distance from the current bar to the most recent highest and the most recent lowest value within this INP period range. So I'm just going to find the bar numbers for each of those. So looking at the highest first, and this will give me the bar number of the highest bar. I'm using the I highest function, and the arguments to that are the symbol and the period. And I'm taking symbol bracket bracket and period bracket bracket for the chart symbol and chart period. Mode high says that I'm looking at the high prices because you can search for the highest of any of the standard values, but I want to look for the highest high price. For a distance of i and p period, beginning with bar number i, and this will count from bar number i to the left. So this will find the highest within that range. And it's possible that bar number i is the highest within this range. So this could return simply i. If not, it will return some value greater than i. And then I have the same thing for lowest, but here I'm using the i lowest function, symbol, period, and I'm searching the low prices with mode low. Once I have those, all I have to do is calculate the Arun indicator value. And you can see, again, I'll look at the Investopedia article. The formula is here. It's based on the distance from the current bar to that most recent high or low bar. And the difference between the period specified and that distance multiplied by 100 divided by INP period. And so I can put those values directly into the buffers. So buffer up I is equal to highest minus I gives me the distance from the current bar to the most recent INP period minus that distance divided by INP period gives me the fraction and then I simply multiply by 100. And I do the same then for the down, 
but here I substitute lowest. The only thing left then is to close out the loop and that's the end of the Arun indicator. I'll compile this to make sure that no errors. If I then go back to MetaTrader, it's still running and you can see how this is operating. If we look here at the recent values, I can see that the low is on a strong downtrend. This is saying a value of 100 on the down. Let me just try to get that on the bar. And that's because that bar is the lowest low within 25 bars to the left. And if we go to the bar before, this is not the lowest low because this bar is actually lower and it's within 25 bars. So that gives you an idea of how this indicator works. So that's all there is for the Arun indicator. I hope this has been useful to you. If it has, click the like button. And if you want to see more of our videos, click subscribe. So until next time, thank you for watching.